Hello from American Losses today, and welcome back to our channel. In the past few days, we have received somber news about the passing of extraordinary talents. Today's episode is dedicated to honoring their memory. Additionally, we will recap the stars whom we have recently lost. Before we begin, we kindly ask for your support. If this video or the legacies of these remarkable individuals have touched your life, please consider giving this video a thumbs up as a sign of respect and remembrance. Thank you. Ron no. Ely, the actor best known for portraying Tarzan in the 1960s TV series, has passed away at the age of 86. His daughter, Kirsten Ely, shared the news in a heartfelt Instagram post, but didn't provide details about how or when he died. Kirsten expressed deep admiration for her father, stating, The impact he had on others is something I've never seen in any other person. There was something truly magical about him. She continued, To me, he hung the moon. He was strong, protective, brilliant, and funny. He was my role model, my inspiration, and my world. Kirsten described Ron's life as one of relentless perseverance, dedication to family and friends, and the courage to always do what was right. She emphasized how much his love impacted those close to him, making the world brighter for anyone fortunate enough to know him. In her moving tribute, Kirsten also reflected on the loss of her brother Cameron and her mother Valerie in 2019, describing how she finds comfort in knowing her father is now reunited with them. I will proudly carry all my favorite pieces of them, lovingly cemented in my heart. Ron Ely rose to fame playing Tarzan from 1966 to 1968 on NBC, later appearing in popular shows like The Love Boat, Fantasy Island, and Wonder Woman. He also starred in Doc Savage, the Man of Bronze, and made his final screen appearance in 2014. In later years, Ron stepped away from acting to focus on raising his family. In a past interview, he explained his decision to leave the industry, saying, I wanted to be with my kids and support them through school and life. His legacy, both on and off the screen, remains as a testament to his talent, dedication, and love for his family. Ron Ely, best known for his iconic role as Tarzan in the 1960s TV series, has passed away at the age of 86. His daughter, Kirsten Ely, shared the heartbreaking news in an Instagram post, although she didn't provide further details about his passing. In her tribute, Kirsten highlighted the profound impact her father had on others, describing him as magical and a source of inspiration. To me, he hung the moon, she wrote. He was strong, protective, brilliant, and funny. She also shared how deeply his love and presence had affected everyone around him, creating a brighter world for those who knew him. Kirsten reflected on her father's legacy of perseverance, dedication to family, and doing what was right. She also found comfort in knowing Ron is now reunited with her mother, Valerie, and her brother, Cameron, who both tragically passed in 2019. I will proudly carry all my favorite pieces of them, cemented in my heart, she wrote. Ron Ely rose to fame portraying Tarzan from 1966 to 1968 on NBC, later appearing on popular shows like The Love Boat, Fantasy Island, and Wonder Woman. He also starred in Doc Savage, The Man of Bronze, and made his final screen appearance in 2014. In later years, Ron stepped away from acting to focus on his family. In past interviews, he explained his decision to leave the industry, emphasizing his desire to spend more time raising his children. His legacy continues to inspire through his talent, dedication, and love for his family. In today's episode, we remember Fernando Valenzuela, the legendary pitcher who revolutionized the game of baseball and won the hearts of millions, both on and off the field. The Los Angeles Dodgers announced his passing at the age of 63. Valenzuela's journey from a small Mexican village to becoming a global sports icon is nothing short of remarkable. Born in Echoaquila, Mexico, in 1960, Fernando was the youngest of 12 children. His early life, filled with family and farming, laid the foundation for his resilience and work ethic. By age 16, he had already begun his professional baseball career in Mexico's minor leagues, and just two years later, the Dodgers saw his potential and signed him. When Valenzuela made his major league debut in 1980, no one could have predicted the storm that was about to hit. The following season, known as Fernando Mania, 
saw him capturing the attention of baseball fans around the world. With his unique screwball pitch, he led the Dodgers to a World Series title, won the National League Cy Young Award, and was named Rookie of the Year. The 1981 season cemented Valenzuela as a phenomenon, especially among Mexican-American fans who found a hero they could relate to in El Toro, the stocky, determined pitcher who defied the odds. Valenzuela's presence at Dodger Stadium turned games into a celebration of Mexican culture, and his impact is still seen today as his jersey remains a fan favorite. But Fernando's legacy went beyond his performance on the field. He represented hope and pride for the Mexican and Mexican-American communities, breaking barriers, and inspiring future generations. His humility, coupled with his talent, made him a beloved figure across baseball. His commitment to his heritage and his people was always evident. Whether it was through his words about the importance of education or his desire to uplift his community through his success. Wallace Wally Amos, the creator of famous Amos cookies, has passed away at the age of 88. His children, Sean and Sarah Amos, confirmed he died at his Honolulu home due to complications from dementia. He is survived by his wife, Carol Williams, and two other children, Gregory and Michael. Famous Amos's current owner, the Ferrero Group, also confirmed his passing. Ferrero expressed their condolences, stating, Wally Amos brought joy to millions with his cookies and inspired generations of entrepreneurs. We will continue to honor his legacy. Wally's children added, our dad inspired a generation of entrepreneurs. Famous Amos was a great American success story and a source of black pride. Born in 1936 in Tallahassee, Wally moved to Harlem as a teen. He briefly left school, earned his GED, and served in the Air Force from 1954 to 1957. Before becoming a cookie icon, Wally worked his way up in the talent agency world. Starting in the mailroom at William Morris Agency in 1957, he became the first black talent agent in the industry, signing Simon and Garfunkel and the Supremes. In 1975, Wally opened the first famous Amos Cookie Company store on Sunset Boulevard with the financial support of Marvin Gaye and Helen Reddy. The cookies, made with natural ingredients and no preservatives, quickly became a hit, generating $12 million in revenue within five years. Wally's name and smiling face became iconic. President Reagan even awarded him with an Award of Entrepreneurial Excellence in 1986. Despite financial struggles leading to the sale of Famous Amos in 1988, Wally continued to pursue his passion for baking under different names like Uncle No Name and The Cookie Kahuna. Wally also became a strong advocate for adult literacy and authored several books, including The Cookie Never Crumbles and The Path to Success is Paved with Positive Thinking. His legacy of entrepreneurship, passion, and perseverance continues to inspire today. Michael Newman, beloved Baywatch star, has passed away at 67 following a long battle with Parkinson's disease. His close friend, Matt Felker, director of After Baywatch, Moment in the Sun, confirmed that Newman died on October 20th from heart complications, surrounded by loved ones. Newman rose to fame in the 90s as Mike Numi Newman on Baywatch, the only real-life lifeguard among the cast. He appeared in 150 episodes, second only to David Hasselhoff in show appearances. Despite his fame, Newman continued working as a firefighter, balancing both careers until retiring after 25 years. Diagnosed with Parkinson's at age 50, Newman dedicated much of his life to raising awareness and funds through the Michael J. Fox Foundation. In a recent interview, he shared, This disease has given me a lot of thinking time, bringing wisdom I didn't expect. He took 10 medications a day and spoke openly about the challenges of Lee. Though Baywatch be Baywatch Night spinoff and cherished the opportunities to tell his real-life story, as reflected in the recent Baywatch documentary, Newman is survived by his wife of 36 years, Sarah, their two children, Chris and Emily, and their granddaughter, Charlie. Prior to his diagnosis, he had planned to retire in Hawaii with his wife, having built their dream home near where Baywatch Hawaii was filmed. Reflecting on his life, Newman said, Life is short. It's something I didn't often give myself a chance to think about before Parkinson's. His legacy as a hero both on and off the screen will live on. John Amos, the beloved actor known for his iconic roles in Good Times, Roots, and Coming to America, has passed away at the age of 84. His son, 
Kelly Christopher K.C. Amos, confirmed that Amos died of natural causes in Los Angeles on August 21st. In a heartfelt statement, K.C. shared, He was a man with the kindest heart, and he was loved the world over. Amos, known as the TV father for many, left an indelible mark on television and film, particularly through his portrayal of James Evans Sr. on Good Times, the first TV show to focus on a black family. Amos' career began long before his breakout role in Good Times. Starting as a professional football player in the 1960s, he later transitioned to acting, making his TV debut on The Billy Cosby Show and The Tim Conway Comedy Hour. His portrayal of Gordy Howard on The Mary Tyler Moore Show in 1970 set the stage for his future success. His dedication to presenting authentic stories of black families led to creative clashes with the producers of Good Times, ultimately resulting in his departure in 1976. Despite the controversy, Amos's influence remained powerful, and he continued to advocate for realistic and respectful portrayals of black life on television. In 1977, Amos delivered a groundbreaking performance in Roots, earning him an Emmy nomination for his portrayal of Kunta Kinte, a role that cemented his legacy in the entertainment industry. His career thrived through the 80s and 90s, with notable appearances on The Fresh Prince of Bel-Air, Hunter, and 704 Hauser. Perhaps his most memorable film role was as Cleo McDowell in Coming to America, 1988, a part he reprised in the 2021 sequel, further showcasing his versatility and enduring appeal. Amos's acting never slowed down, with recent roles in films like Block Party, Me Time, and appearances on TV shows like The Righteous Gemstones. Mitzi Gaynor, the iconic actress and singer, passed away peacefully at the age of 93. Best known for her performances in classic movie musicals from the 1950s, Mitzi captivated audiences with her unparalleled talent and vibrant personality. Born Francesca Marlene de Chagny von Gerber in Chicago in 1931, she followed in the footsteps of her father, a musician, and her mother, a dancer, immersing herself in the performing arts from a young age. The unwavering support of her family propelled her to pursue her dreams, leading her to a life filled with memorable performances. Her most famous role was as Nellie Forbush in the 1958 film South Pacific. With unforgettable songs like I'm in love with a wonderful guy and I'm gonna wash that man right out of my hair, Mitzi shone brightly and received a Golden Globe nomination. The film became the highest grossing film of the year solidifying her status as a Hollywood star. The journey to that iconic role was not easy, with fierce competition, but Mitzi's determination and joy set her apart, opening doors in her career. In addition to her film successes, she also dazzled on television with Emmy-winning specials that showcased her singing and dancing talent. These productions, which she starred in from 1967 to 1978, were known for their grand production numbers and provided Mitzi with happy moments she fondly remembered. She also made appearances on various popular variety shows, becoming a beloved figure in American entertainment. A memorable moment in her career was her interaction with the Beatles during their second appearance on The Ed Sullivan Show, where she described the musicians as true gentlemen. In 1960, Mitzi Gaynor received a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, recognizing her contributions to the entertainment world. Her journey as an actress and performer continues to inspire many artists and professionals in the field today. Shelley Duvall, the beloved actress known for her iconic role in The Shining, has passed away. Her partner, Dan Gilroy, confirmed her death, revealing that she had been struggling with complications related to diabetes. Gilroy expressed his deep sorrow, stating, my dear, sweet, wonderful life partner and friend left us. Too much suffering lately, now she's free. Fly away, beautiful Shelley. Duvall's legacy as a groundbreaking performer in Hollywood will always be cherished by those who knew and loved her. Director Scott Goldberg, who collaborated with Duvall on her final film, The Forest Hills, reflected on her remarkable impact on the industry, saying, Shelley leaves behind an amazing legacy and will be missed by so many people, myself included. Born in Fort Worth, Texas, Duvall initially contemplated a career in science. However, fate intervened when she was discovered by crew members during a party for the film Brewster McCloud. This fortuitous encounter led to her first on-screen appearance, launching her acting career. 
Duvall quickly became a frequent collaborator with director Robert Altman, featuring in notable films such as McCabe and Mrs. Miller, Thieves Like Us, and Nashville. Her dedication to her craft was evident when she recalled Altman's praise. After Thieves Like Us, Robert looked at me and said, I knew you were good, but I didn't know you were great. It's the reason I stuck with it and became an actress. Duvall gained widespread fame with her performance in Stanley Kubrick's The Shining, a film renowned for its intense filming process, including the record for the most retakes for a single scene. The actress shared her experiences, stating that the emotional demands of the role were immense. 35 takes, running and crying, it gets hard, she recalled. To prepare for her emotionally charged scenes, Duval often listened to sad songs or reflected on personal memories that brought her sorrow. But after a while, your body rebels. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today we gather to honor the memory of Taylor Rousseau Grigg, a vibrant 25-year-old TikTok star who touched the hearts of many before her untimely passing on October 4th. Her husband, Cameron Grigg, recently shared poignant images from her emotional send-off capturing the profound impact Taylor had on those who loved her. As he reflected on their shared journey, he remarked on the beauty of the memorial, stating, It was beautiful, princess, highlighting the love that surrounded her in life and now in memory. Accompanied by the heartfelt strains of Three Doors Down's Here Without You, her tribute resonated with deep emotion, reminding us of the fragility of life and the importance of cherishing our loved ones. Taylor's passing came after a year marked by incredible struggle, battling complications related to asthma and Addison's disease. Cameron expressed his heartbreak in a touching Instagram post, emphasizing the pain of losing someone so young and full of life. No one ever expects to have to deal with this kind of pain and heartache, especially at our age, he wrote, underscoring the heavy burden of grief he now bears. He remembered Taylor not just for her struggles, but for her unwavering spirit, noting how she brought joy and light to everyone around her. Taylor's courage, even in her darkest hours, was a beacon of hope for many, showcasing her incredible strength and faith. In a TikTok video shared earlier this year, Taylor provided her followers with a candid health update, revealing the challenges she faced during her illness. Her vulnerability and honesty resonated deeply with her audience who found solace in her story. You're seeing me be sick for the whole time that we're married, she explained, sharing her frustrations and the struggle to find answers. Her words struck a chord with many, as they illustrated not only her physical battles, but also her emotional resilience. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today, we honor the remarkable life of Dr. Ruth Westheimer, a pioneering sex therapist who passed away at the age of 96 on July 12th. Known as Dr. Ruth, she became a cultural icon in the 1980s, captivating audiences with her candid and humorous discussions about human sexuality. Her passing leaves a significant impact on the landscape of sexual education and awareness. Born Carola Ruth Siegel in Wiesenfeld, Germany, on June 4, 1928, Ruth faced immense tragedy as a Jewish refugee during the Holocaust, losing her family at a young age. She was part of the Kinder Transport, which facilitated the escape of thousands of Jewish children from Germany. After relocating to Palestine in 1945, she trained as a sniper in the Israeli army, showcasing her resilience and strength. Dr. Ruth's career in sexuality education began at Planned Parenthood, where she trained family planning counselors. In 1980, she launched her groundbreaking radio show, Sexually Speaking. What started as a brief segment quickly grew into a decade-long series that made complex topics accessible to the public. Her famous advice, go buy an ice cream cone in practice, highlighted her ability to blend education with humor, breaking down barriers around discussing sex. Throughout her life, Dr. Blaith, Ruth authored numerous books and delivered lectures, earning accolades such as an honorary doctorate from Trinity College, and the Medal for Distinguished Service from Columbia University. Her journey was celebrated in the 2019 documentary, Ask Dr. Ruth, showcasing her evolution from a Holocaust survivor to a beloved figure in pop culture. Despite her fame, Dr. Ruth often expressed gratitude for her life. Her resilience and ability to transform pain into purpose inspire us all. As we celebrate her legacy, 
let us remember Dr. Ruth's unwavering commitment to promoting open dialogue about sexuality. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today we honor the life of actress Shannon Doherty, who tragically passed away at the age of 53 after a long battle with cancer. Her publicist confirmed that Shannon lost her fight on July 13th, surrounded by loved ones, including her beloved dog, Bowie. Known for her iconic role as Brenda Walsh on Beverly Hills 902 and Tell, Shannon became a household name in the 1990s, captivating audiences with her powerful performances and strong presence. Shannon was first diagnosed with breast cancer in 2015, and her journey was marked by resilience and determination. She candidly shared her experiences, including her struggle with stage 4 metastatic breast cancer, which had spread to her bones. In November 2023, she expressed her unwillingness to surrender to the disease, stating, I'm not done with living. I'm not done with loving. Her spirit shone through even during the most challenging moments as she continued to advocate for cancer research and awareness. Throughout her career, Shannon also starred in Charmed as Prue Halliwell, a role that further solidified her status in the entertainment industry. Despite her health struggles, she joined the reboot of Beverly Hills 902 Neo to honor her late co-star, Luke Perry, and to demonstrate that those with cancer can still pursue their passions. Her strength and resilience inspired many, with fellow actors recognizing her as a guiding light in difficult times. In her final interviews, Shannon emphasized the importance of gratitude and the simple joys of life. She shared that cancer had made her more aware of the world around her, appreciating every moment spent with family and friends. Her legacy will live on, not only in her memorable roles, but also in her brave fight against cancer. If you found this tribute meaningful, please like this video and subscribe for more stories that celebrate the lives of remarkable individuals. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today we honor the life of Kasim Ryan, known as Ka, who sadly passed away on October 12, 2024, at the age of 52. Born in Brownsville, Brooklyn, Ka was a dedicated rapper and a hero as a firefighter. He served the New York City Fire Department for over 20 years, rising to the rank of captain and bravely responding to the September 11 attacks. His legacy as a first responder and recording artist leaves an unforgettable impact on our community. Ka emerged in the underground hip-hop scene in the early 90s, initially as part of the group Natural Elements and later with the duo Nightbreed. In 1999, he joined the FDNY and temporarily shelved his music career. However, the call of hip-hop was strong, and in 2008, he returned with his solo debut, Ironworks. Known for his introspective lyrics and unique sound, he released 11 solo albums, building a devoted fan base in the underground hip-hop community. His final album, The Thief Next to Jesus, came out just two months before his passing, showcasing his unwavering dedication to his craft. Kay's music resonated with themes of struggle and resilience, drawing listeners into his world. Following his death, many in the hip-hop community paid tribute, highlighting his artistry and authenticity. The Alchemist described him as a living prophet, emphasizing the profound wisdom in his words. Ka is survived by his wife, film producer Mimi Valdez, his mother, and his sister. Today, we remember Kasim Ryan not only as a talented rapper, but also as a devoted firefighter and protector of his community. Thank you for joining us on Tribute to American Legends, where we celebrate the lives of those who inspire us all. Welcome back to Tribute to American Legends. Today, we honor the life of James B. Sicking, who passed away at the age of 90. Known for his memorable roles on television, Sicking died peacefully at his Los Angeles home, surrounded by family. He leaves behind a legacy defined by his remarkable career that spanned over six decades, marked notably by his portrayal of Latonner Howard Hunter on Hill Street Blues from 1981 to 1987. His performance in this groundbreaking series earned him an Emmy nomination and solidified his status in the acting world. Sicking's character was a leader of the Precinct's emergency action team, known for his strong presence and memorable lines. Born in Los Angeles in 1934, Sicking attended UCLA where he earned a degree in theater arts. His acting journey began in stage productions and transitioned to films in the mid-1950s. 
appearing in classics like Five Guns West and The Revolt of Mamie Stover. He also made notable television appearances on popular shows, including Perry Mason and Columbo, before landing his iconic role on Hill Street Blues, which became a critical darling and a blueprint for future police dramas. After Hill Street Blues, Sicking starred as Dr. David Hauser, the father of the titular character on Doogie Hauser, M.D., alongside Neil Patrick Harris. Beyond television, he appeared in films like Star Trek III, The Search for Spock, and continued acting in various roles until his semi-retirement in the late 2000s. Sicking often reflected on his time in the industry with pride, emphasizing the special bond created among cast and crew during productions. James B. Sicking is survived by his beloved wife, Florine, along with their two children and four grandchildren. Today, we remember him not just for his iconic roles, but for the impact he made in television history. Thank you for joining us in celebrating the legacy of James B. Sicking on Tribute to American Legends. Dolly Parton, a name synonymous with country music, was born on January 19, 1946, in a small rural cabin in Sevier County, Tennessee. She was one of 12 children raised by Robert Lee Parton, a tobacco farmer, and Avi Lee Parton, a homemaker. Growing up in poverty, music became a refuge for young Dolly, who showed a talent for songwriting and singing at an early age. At just 10 years old, she began performing on local radio and television shows in nearby Knoxville, Tennessee. This early exposure laid the foundation for what would become one of the most storied careers in American music history. Parton's big break came in 1967 when she joined the Porter Wagoner Show, a popular television variety program. Initially, audiences were hesitant to embrace her as she was stepping into a role previously held by another beloved singer. Her unique voice and magnetic personality quickly won them over. Her partnership with Porter Wagoner not only gave her exposure, but also led to a series of successful duet albums. By the early 1970s, Parton had established herself as a solo artist, with hits like Jolene, I Will Always Love You, and Coat of Many Colors capturing the hearts of listeners worldwide. Dolly's career wasn't just limited to country music. By the late 1970s, she successfully crossed over to mainstream pop, a move that broadened her fan base. Songs like Here You Come Again and Nine to Five became chart toppers and introduced her to an entirely new audience. She also made a foray into acting, starring in films such as 9 to 5, 1980, The Best Little Whorehouse in Texas, 1982, and Steel Magnolias, 1989, proving her versatility as both a musician and actress. Her witty humor, down-to-earth charm, and striking appearance, with her blonde hair and signature style, made her a cultural icon. However, Dolly Parton's life wasn't always a bed of roses. Behind her bubbly persona and unwavering smile, she faced a number of personal and health challenges. Throughout her life, Dolly has been open about the difficulties she endured, from financial struggles during her youth to emotional battles in her adult life. In the late 1980s, she went through a period of deep depression. This was a time when her career seemed to be in decline, and she struggled with her weight, personal relationships, and self-esteem. Dolly has since spoken candidly about this dark time in her life, explaining how she turned to her faith and the support of loved ones to pull through. In terms of physical health, Dolly has faced several issues over the years. In 1982, she underwent a partial hysterectomy, a procedure that left her unable to have children, something she has openly discussed as one of her life's greatest heartbreaks. Additionally, Dolly has experienced problems related to weight fluctuations, dealing with both overindulgence and restrictive diets at different points in her life. Despite these challenges, she has managed to maintain a level of vitality and enthusiasm that has allowed her to keep performing well into her later years. More recently, in the 2010s, Dolly was diagnosed with stomach and digestive issues, which reportedly caused her severe discomfort. Though the details of her condition remain private, it is well known that Dolly has had to undergo surgery to alleviate some of her health problems. In true Dolly Parton fashion, however, she continued to perform, work, and spread joy, refusing to let her health challenges dim her star. Parton has also faced rumors of undergoing various cosmetic surgeries, which she neither confirms nor denies outright, 
often making light of it with her characteristic humor. Today, at nearly 80 years old, Dolly Parton shows no signs of slowing down. While many artists her age have long since retired, Parton continues to thrive both in her music and in her philanthropic efforts. In 2020, Dolly released a Holly Dolly Christmas, a festive album that became her first number one album on the Billboard Top Holiday Albums chart in 30 years. Her recent collaboration with acclaimed musicians across genres speaks to her enduring relevance in the industry. In 2022, she was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, an acknowledgement of her incredible impact not only on country music but on popular music as a whole. Beyond her career, Dolly has made significant contributions to society through her charity work. Her Imagination Library, founded in 1995, has provided free books to millions of children across the United States, the United Kingdom, Canada, and Australia. The initiative was originally inspired by her father, who never learned to read or write, and it has since become one of the most successful literacy programs in the world. Her commitment to education and children's welfare has earned her widespread recognition and respect. In addition to her work with literacy, Dolly has also been involved in numerous other philanthropic efforts. In 2020, she donated $1 million to Vanderbilt University Medical Center, which helped fund research leading to the development of the Moderna COVID-19 vaccine. Dolly has always been a beacon of hope and resilience, using her platform and wealth to give back to her community and the world at large. Whether through her music, her charity work, or her uplifting presence, she continues to be an inspiration to people of all ages. As of today, Dolly Parton remains as busy as ever. She has hinted at working on new music, and she continues to oversee her many business ventures, including Dollywood, the theme park she founded in her home state of Tennessee. Her park remains one of the most visited tourist destinations in the United States, attracting millions of visitors each year. Despite her age, Dolly's work ethic is unparalleled, and she shows no signs of stepping away from the spotlight. Dolly's personal life remains somewhat private, though she's been married to Carl Dean since 1966. Despite being one of the most famous women in the world, Dolly has managed to keep her marriage out of the public eye. She and Carl rarely make public appearances together, and he is said to prefer a life away from the limelight, but their marriage has stood the test of time, a remarkable feat in itself. As she approaches her 80th birthday, Dolly Parton continues to embody the spirit of resilience, generosity, and boundless creativity. From her humble beginnings in rural Tennessee to her current status as a global icon, Dolly's journey has been nothing short of extraordinary. She remains a testament to the power of perseverance, talent, and staying true to oneself. While the world eagerly anticipates what Dolly will do next, one thing is for certain. Her legacy is already cemented, not only as one of the greatest country artists of all time, but also as a beloved cultural figure whose impact transcends music, entertainment, and philanthropy.